<laughs> the next guy gets as maudlin as Johnson did. I'm leaving. Uh -huh. Connie Kowal. Waitress, can we have a couple phone books here for Connie so that uh, he can get over the podium and cut the lights for the glare off the floor? It's amazing. This guy I had, my first. You're, you're, you're just done. Shooting out. Yeah. By the way, your toupee's do a 10. <laughs> just like the rented clothes. It's the best you look. My God. Don't recognize you without coach's shoes. It's great to be here tonight and uh, see so many great friends and, of course, Coach Burns. Um, I don't know, what can you say about Coach Burns that he hasn't said already about himself? Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to start. But when you do think of Coach Burns, you think of those very famous three words that we've all grown up to live with. What the crap. So since this is being televised, I'd like to have everybody on the count of three say what the crap. Okay? One, two, three. What the crap? And you can't just do it by saying, you gotta get a little into it, you know? Looking at the third base coach's box, you know, he's over there and he's going, you know, what the crap? You know, to make you even lower than whale shit, okay? I remember one time we were playing Sycamore, it was the sectionals. 1970, my senior year, and I let off the game with a base hit, and we had a really good hot season in the tournament. Next guy up, I think, was, uh, was I think Bill Mullen there. He hits a triple. I mean, he hits it in the gap. Well, the steal sign was on, so I'm running in. I don't peek to see if uh, I should stand up or keep running, so I don't peek. I'm sliding into second base, and I think I'm great. There's no throw. There's no one covering. I figure, this is great. Scouts are watching the sectional game. I'm stealing second base, and I'm like this. I look at Burns, and he's over going, come on, what the crap, the ball's at the wall. <laughs> So I get up, I run over to third base, trip around third, and instead of him giving me some nice encouragement, he goes, Koa, what the crap? <laughs> so this is the kind of stuff we grew up with. Okay, these famous three words, what the crap. I think if there's one thing I told my wife Sally on the way down tonight, I said, there's one thing, what the crap. I said, I live with that terminology all the time. But you gotta remember one thing about Coach Burns, okay? His sarcasm is second to none. He, uh, you know, he's the, he's the Don Rickles of coaching. And I think when I played, I didn't appreciate it as much, even though I did get a chuckle out of it. But I think he did it for the fans. Because he knew there was a good audience behind him, and he'd give a couple of one-liners, and the fans were laughing. We're getting ripped. But, he, but he's doing great. It's entertainment. <laughs> and I remember seeing him. I remember going to a game at Lambert Field, and... I'm not kidding you. I thought I had to pay to watch the game. He was so good with his humor, but you didn't appreciate when you were playing. But he would treat everybody the same, including reporters. And I remember guys from the Glen Ellen News would come up and ask him, you know, accounts of the game, get some quotes. And I remember one time they said, well, let's get off baseball for a second. That's not working. What do you think of ignorance and apathy? He said, I don't know and I don't care. <laughs> so everybody had to put up with his, with his crap, literally. But you got to look at his motivational techniques. They were wonderful. They were wonderful. I remember playing shortstop for Coach Burns, and I booted a ball one inning. I came in, and he said, nice job. Hit a home run. You're even for the inning. Okay, I think everybody got one of those. Just a little shot. So you go up there. You try to hit a home run. I couldn't hit a home run if you gave me a fungo. I'd make it out, and now you're even more hot at me. But that was part of his motivational tactics. Uh, People who played over at the Glenbard West Field, that's across from the school. Remember the railroad tracks over there? Yes, sir. Okay, everybody was familiar with that. Well, if you didn't play well, the one big fear was that he put you up by the railroad tracks for shagging foul balls. <laughs> Not to get the balls, hoping you get hit. <laughs> Go up in the tracks for a while, you know, you just throw you up there. But I remember, again, my senior year, we were having a horrible start. Horrible. So Coach Burns said, we're going to try something different. So he's going to use, again, his positive motivational tactics. Okay, and Marge, you probably get, you know, he probably runs them through you first, and you probably soften them. We had brand new uniforms, okay? He took away our uniforms and made us wear our grays. Luke and Bill, you remember that? Okay, didn't work. We lost. He got killed by York. Next game, we play Hinsdale. 
he goes, all right, you wear the road uniforms again, you sit on the first base line. Embarrassing us right there, but we won. Okay, that's what did it, making us sit away from our girlfriends. We wanted to go back on the other side. But he always used positive motivating forces, that's what we liked. I want to check something out here because there's guys from 30 years to show you how novel he is. I want to see if the signs changed at all. <laughs> no, no, they did not. All right? I want to see if the signs changed because, you know, by the time I was a senior, we used audible signs. Hip. Okay? Blunt. Okay? Blunt. Okay? Steel. It was outstanding. But let's check it out. Did everybody have this for the indicator? Right? Everybody. Okay. Check this one out now, okay? Tell me what it is. Batman steel. steel. All right. That was a steel, all right? Everyone, everyone in the West Suburban Conference knew it. Same thing. How about this one? Let's see how we do here, okay? Fun. Fun. Jeez. No wonder we lost so many games. How about this one? Colitis. <laughs> I was just getting to that. All right, so you follow along, you get right here, up the sleeve, right here. What's that? Suicide. Suicide. They always pitched out on that. They knew it, okay? But here's the best one, okay? Let's see who remembers it now. Right here. Right here. Fat Man Steel. Fat Man Steel. All right? <laughs> Original stuff, let me tell you. But everybody knew our signs. Are they still the same signs? Yes. Oh. <laughs> what a program. Thank God for tenure. I remember being downstairs in Beaster Gym and making those paper balls. Remember that? You take the newspapers and wrap up tape, and we toss and just blast them into the wall to work on getting that bat out. Okay? That's one of the things I remember about Coach Burns. How about another one? Rained all day long. Most teams wouldn't even play. What are we out doing that afternoon? Burning the field. Burning the field! You know, I'm talking to my dad, and he says, uh, you guys going to play today? I said, damn right, we're going to burn the field. <laughs> you know, no one knows what we're talking about. we got kids going to the mobile with gas cans. We had one kid, and Pickering probably remembers this, we had one kid got his letter just to carry the gasoline can. <laughs> he, had a, he had a big G with a little, you know, pump thing out. <laughs> it was unbelievable. One day we were playing St. Francis in the districts, and Coach Burns had that old Plymouth, you know, big beater Plymouth station wagon or whatever, okay, and we almost blew up his car, okay, that thing just went right across the field, almost got to his uh, engine, that would have been great, he would have blamed that on me. <laughs> How about hitting inside a Beaster gym and breaking windows, wasn't that great? <laughs> Unbelievable, good times, but he's the innovator of a lot of different things, you know, uh, I think one of the greatest things we did as players, and probably everybody had the experience, was uh, barnstorming across the country. And that was a lot of fun, going on five-day, ten-day trips where we'd go out to Iowa and South Dakota, Denver, go down to Florida, New Orleans. Great times. You know, he really broadened our horizons in terms of our competition. Um, in fact, I remember the first time I saw Coach Burns get thrown out of a game was in Watertown, South Dakota. We lost a championship game in 1968 in some goofy tournament that he invented. And... Uh, <laughs> I guess I think it was the Sioux City Black Sox or something like that. We lost the game. He got kicked not, not only out of the game, but off the premises. And we had to leave town that night and come home via Minnesota. Okay? It was such a reputation. The following year, we played at Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. I got kicked out. Okay? So he taught me well. And I had, you know, we stayed with different people. Okay? On these trips because we didn't have hotels or anything. The person I stayed with, okay, the kids, their dad was a minister. So when it came time to me, you know, I got kicked out for swearing. That was a very pleasant task, but I learned all that from Coach Burns and some of his sayings on the field. But he's, on these trips that we'd go on to, we'd, he'd say, see the sights. Okay, we go to South Dakota. We'd go up and we'd see Mount Rushmore or the Black Hills or Waldrug 
New Orleans, Bourbon Street, whatever. Remember one year we went to Panama City for a tournament, okay, and Coach Burns and I were, uh, he said, come on, let's go shopping. So I said, fine. We went out shopping, and he said, you know, I need a bathing suit. Let's go in the store. So we walk in the store, and I'm, you know, hanging around. He goes up to the man in the store, and he says, uh, I want to see a bathing suit in my size. This, this, and the clerk said, so would I. <laughs> But the one thing that Coach Burns did, we had fun. We played baseball. We learned to love baseball, and we all loved it. We knew fundamentals better than any team, and I think everybody can admit to that. We knew the cutoffs. We knew the rundowns. We knew first and third double steals. And you see a lot of things today, and, you know, it's teams don't learn that as much anymore. And that just goes to show you that this man has a, such a wealth of baseball talent. And uh, Coach Sumka and Coach Bukowski were talking about that. He taught us a lot. And uh, it made it fun to play because we practiced all the time. We worked on situations. It was fun. And we couldn't wait to get out there and, and play each particular night. Uh, I look at the sacrifices that Coach Burns made during the summers. I remember playing seven days a week, nine games a week, because he coached me in the summer league, Legion Ball. I remember when I was still a freshman or sophomore, Colt League. And I think there were two or three other illegal leagues we had. <laughs> Okay, which we'd go out and try to win some money so we could play poker with these guys. <laughs> but we played every day, and we learned how to play baseball, and I don't know if that's being done enough today. But I remember those days vividly because we'd play seven days a week, nine games, and it was just a lot of fun. I remember getting changed in the you know, backseat of cars and switching uniforms and all of a sudden going from a high school game to playing with Pickering and Russell and a Legion game up in yeah. Freeport someplace, and it was great. But I wonder how we ever found any free time to do anything, but I know snowmobiling was a big thing in your life for a while. And I know you guys had snowmobiles and you go up north. And uh, Don was also a big uh, ice fisherman. Not many people know that. Uh, but he went out to an ice, uh, he would find a nice pond one day and he said, I'm going to go catch some fish. He goes out there, 15 minutes, he cuts the ice, throws the bait in, no bites. A voice up above said, There's no fish in there, Don. So he all of a sudden walks around to another spot, cuts a hole, throws his bait in, nothing. There's no fish in there, Don. Finally, he's had enough. He throws another one in, cuts a new hole and all that. Finally, the voice says, there's no fish in there, Don. He looks up and he goes, what the crap? Is that you, Don? No, I'm the ice rink operator. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to leave. But we had the best of everything. I remember from my years at Glenbard, we had new uniforms every year. Okay, Lugie, you remember that, Glennie Reynolds? We had new uniforms every year, every year. We had the greatest, top of the line stuff. He'd go to Hildebrands out there in the western suburbs someplace, come back with the greatest stuff. And, his, and his, the way he did it, and let the truth be known, he would go down to the athletic director at that time, Jim Cook. Okay, a lot of people remember Jimmy Cook, great guy. He'd go down and he'd take the oldest, moldiest freshman uniforms and tell Jim Cook that those were the varsity uniforms. He'd go in and say, how can I put my guys out in this crap here? We need new uniforms. Well, Jim was about 65. He was ready to retire. He didn't care. Okay, he said, go order new unis. He did that for four years. Okay? By the time I was a senior, we had polar bear whites, white kangaroo shoes, yellow uh, gold sanitaries, satin jackets reversibles. We had everything. And we used to go to play Hinsdale or LT, come off the bus looking sharper than you know what. Really smooth. The other team's taking infield. They're starting to kick the ball. They see us coming out, we're real cocky, we get out there, he hits real cream puff infield grounders so we don't mess up, okay? You know, we get four runs in the top of the first and the other team wants to play for him. And we had him, and we had that psychology because we ran a professional show because of his leadership. And it made a lot of fun. But it's great seeing Coach Burns, I haven't seen him for a long time, and uh, obviously our hairlines are getting very similar. Uh, by the way, I heard a vicious rumor I'm not too sure about this. The other day you were playing a game, you were supposed to play a game, and you went to check the weather report, stuck your head out the window at Glenbar just to check, and you got arrested for mooning. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> but part of the fun is seeing everybody here, okay? Noel Bodansky, who I see down at Wrigley Field from time to time. 
you know, it's, it's really good to see everybody here because we have so many memories, and I think everybody can give a one-liner or two about some memory of Don Burns. But he made us proud to play for him, proud to play for Lombard West. Did a lot for me, uh, and I'll never forget that because uh, I was looking for somebody who could give me some guidance, and he did, and it helped me out a lot. I think uh, I think one of the best pieces of advice he gave me was just to have fun and take the knowledge that I'm giving you. He goes, it'll happen, but work hard. He also told me one other thing, and uh, he said, in order, I said, what's it going to take to make the major leagues? And he said, well, he said for you, it's going to take a lot of luck to get in the major leagues. He goes, you'll probably get in the back door someday. Well, I got in the back door, okay, and. One of the things that, uh, you know, Russ is reading telegrams and all that, but in my role with the Chicago Cubs in marketing and promotions, I have the privilege to work with a lot of people, but this is one thing that did come from a desk of a person in our office today as I came in. Dear Don, on behalf of the entire Chicago Cubs organization, congratulations on your retirement from Glenbard West High School. While I know the students of Glenbard West will miss you, your contributions to the many young people you have worked with will be remembered for a long time. We take off our hats to you for a job well done. We all hope you're, uh, you enjoy your retirement, and we promise to do a good job in 1989 to ensure that enjoyment. And it's signed by my boss, who is Jim Fry, Executive Vice President, Director of Baseball Operations for the Chicago Cubs. I'll just leave with one last thing, and this is something that, you know, there's a lot of decorations in this room, but I just want to, want, want to add one thing. We've all been past the marquee at Wrigley Field. We are going to get this in a poster size, but uh, we couldn't get it done. But uh, it says on there in the Wrigley, Wrigley Field marquee, Don Burns, all-star coach. And I think that sums it up. He's the best. Coach, congratulations.